The Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg created his method of composing with 12 tones in the early 20th century. We now refer to this system as 12-tone technique, or, if you feel like being more fancy, dodecaphonicism. Essentially, the basic premise is that the composer creates a row using all 12 chromatic pitch classes, often without repetitions. The composition is created using various permutations of the original row. Like with serialism, these operations are transposition, inversion, retrograde, and retrograde inversion. Indeed, you can think of dodecaphonicism as serialism extended out to all 12 chromatic notes. That's our old friend Schoenberg right there. Did you know that he was also a painter? His most famous painting is this, titled The Red Gaze, which is thought to be a self-portrait. Perhaps it gives you some insight into the man as an artist and as a creator. Paintings aside, our task today is to complete a row matrix based on a given row. Here is an example of a 12-tone row and the aforementioned operations. First, let's hear the original row starting on F or pitch class 5. Next, here is a retrograde of the prime row. Notice that it's just the original row backwards. And here is an inversion of the prime row. Notice that the first note is the same F compared to the original, but the direction of interval changes. Where first we had a perfect fourth ascending, it's now a perfect fourth descending. Then it was a minor second descending, and now it's a minor second ascending, and so on. I did change a few of the intervals enharmonically so as to avoid double sharps or double flats. For instance, the D to C sharp in the original is a minor second descending, but I altered it to an augmented unison ascending so that I could avoid a B double flat. A natural is simpler. Here's the full row. And finally, here is a retrograde inversion of the original row. Notice that it's simply the inversion played backwards. That's what retrograde inversion means, a retrograde of the inversion. Using a row matrix, we can easily keep track of all 48 versions of a single row. The left side of the matrix shows the 12 prime rows, or transpositions. From the top down, we can see the inversions. From the right to left, the retrogrades. And from the bottom up, the retrograde inversions. Let's use my original row to complete a row matrix. Just a quick note before we begin. There are two systems for completing a row matrix. In the older system, the one I learned in college, your prime row always begins with zero, whether or not the first note is C, and the rest of the rows are transposed accordingly. In the modern system, we eliminate this unnecessary transposition and label our prime rows based on whatever pitch class begins it. For instance, if our prime row begins on E flat, then our initial prime row is three, or P3. If it instead begins on A, then our prime row is labeled P9. Got it? We will use the modern system for our row matrix. Remember the prime row from before? It began on F, which is pitch class 5. You can complete a matrix using either note names or integer notation. Let's use integer notation, as it avoids any enharmonic complications. The second note is B-flat, or T. The third is A, or 9. Next is E, or 4. And then D, which is 2. Then C-sharp, 1. And B, which humorously is E, 
for 11, then C, which is 0, G is 7, F sharp is 6, A flat, 8, and finally E flat is 3. That completes our prime row across the top of the matrix. Let's label this row P5. Note that it will be called R5 on the other side, since R5 is the original row backwards. And remember that R forms of a row are always named for the last note in their series, or the first note of the original series, since an R form is that original row backwards. The next step to construct our matrix is to complete the inversion of the prime row down the leftmost column. I showed you the notation for this earlier, but we can generate the integers for ourselves by changing the direction of each of the numerical distances between the first note and each succeeding note. As in, going from 5 to 10 is moving up 5 from the starting number. So now we will go down 5 from the starting number. 5 minus 5 is 0. From here on, I suggest calculating the distance of each successive note from the starting note. For instance, the third note, 9, or A, is a major third, or a distance of 4, above the starting pitch class of 5. So now we will subtract 4 from our starting note. 5 minus 4 is 1, and so on. 5 to 4 is subtracting 1, so let's add 1, 6. The easiest way to get from 5 to 2 is to subtract 3, so let's add 3 to 5. 8. 5 to 1 is moving down 4, so let's go up 4 from 5. 9. 5 to 11 is a tritone away, up or down 6 mod 12. So, whether we go up 6 from 5 or go down 6 from 5, we get the same result, another E, or 11. 5 to 0 is a perfect 5th up or a perfect 4th down. Down is simpler in this case. Moving from 5 to 0 is subtracting 5, so going up 5 gives us 10, or t. 5 to 7 is moving up by 2, so let's move down by 2 from 5, 3. 5 to 6 is easy, up 1. Let's go down by 1, 4. Almost done. 5 to 8 is up 3. Down 3 from 5 is 2. Finally, 5 to 3 is moving down 2. Moving up 2 from 5 is 7, or G. The hard work, if you could even call it that, is done. What's left is what I call the grunt work, or relentlessly adding by 1 to complete the remaining rows. To finish the matrix, we need to transpose our initial prime row, P5, up by one half step to create P6. And then we'll do that again to create P7, and then P8, and so on. Let's begin. From 5 at the top, find the row that will begin with 6. This row is the original one transposed by a half step higher. So all we have to do is add 1 to each of the original numbers, like so. Once P6 has been completed, let's write out P7 from P6. I'll speed up the rest of this section so as to avoid the tedium of the labor. It's a thankless job, really, but simple. All you do is add 1, again and again and again. Keep in mind that Schoenberg and his compadres did not get to enjoy the utility of a row matrix to keep all 48 row forms, as it was invented later in the 20th century. Necessity is the mother of invention. Schoenberg and friends had to write out each of the row forms for their compositions, or keep track of it in their heads. Okay, I'm done. We now have a complete row matrix, including the labeling of the row forms. 
Again, take note that the P and R forms have the same numbers, as well as the I and the RI forms. This is because any row name with an R in it, as a retrograde of the same type, is simply a backwards version of the row by the same number. And thus completes our lesson on how to construct a row matrix.